Um, come here, you were talking to Darrow O'Donovan, and um, he said there's a lot of propaganda around this split season, that, and he reckons it's hurting both elite players and club players. So you did a piece to them on it. Um, what's, what's the context there? Was that, did you blow anything out of proportion like the scumbag journalist you are? <laughs> definitely not. No, definitely not. Um, and it was kind of something he volunteered himself. I wasn't, I don't even, not sure did I ask him necessarily about the split season. I didn't actually. I uh, The question um, that kicked it off was, I actually said, you enjoy your downtime. That's what I said. And he said about, he likes going traveling or whatever. But then he kind of went, went into this. I'll just read it out just in case anybody hasn't seen it. So he just says, for an inter-county player, the season actually never really ends. Everyone is on about the split season. And I think there's a lot of propaganda around it. Take TJ Reid, for example. He has played the whole 12 months the last two years with no real break. You see it with the Derry lads uh, there, like Connor Glass. It's hurting elite players, but it's hurting the club players as well. A lot of conversations need to be had between clubs, counties, and the GA in general. I see it in our club. How do you motivate club players to stay training? When do they go back? Do they go back? Do they go back in February? Do they go back in April? Now, me and you are very, very pro club. Okay, mm. very, very pro club. But there is a thing now online that if you say anything negative about the about the split season, you lads will be dead. Like it's literally, if you put a comment out saying, I think Martin Kiley did it recently, um, th that works with RTE, and boys, th like there was a litter, like there was a pile on on top of them. Now I think, I, I, I don't necessarily disagree that there's a lot of propaganda around it. You can't say anything negative about the split season, number one, but you've been involved in training a club team as well. And you see it at the coal face how difficult it actually is. Like, it is difficult to keep lads motivated for longer periods now. Um, like, uh, how should we say it? Like, they're not playing in, you know, there's not a game in April or there's not a game in May or like that. So you're having to pull it out a bit longer. Maybe that means you bring them back a bit later or whatever. But I know from chatting club managers and lads that would not say it publicly, but they, they would say it privately, privately and they'd say it very strongly that something that we do need to have a look at a bit here, that lads are... Losing interest at certain times, by the time it gets to the championship, they've that they've kind of maybe that much done that the the thirst or hunger isn't there, maybe like it would have been before. But I do think it's okay to have a conversation. Whereas a lot of people, um, because uh, you know, ninety nine percent of GA players or club players, they're saying, "Oh, you're just looking to get another couple of weeks out of your job," or do like that. That's not like that's <laughs> that's not true at all. And right. I think. Me and you are seeing it from from kind of both sides, but like, what are what are your thoughts on it? It's not perfect. It's not perfect. It's and and it definitely needs to be refined a bit more. And like, I listen. I think part of the refinement, and it's not going to happen now. By the looks of it, was was kicking it back a small bit. The inter county season, maybe to the first week in August. And Dara suggested, like, what his suggestion was was like um, to align the club with the county a bit more. Was to have. Would say inter provincial club leagues going on. If Tipper playing uh, Limerick in the park at four o'clock in the Munster Championship, that Patrick's well are playing Turles that morning in a bit, you know what I mean? That type of thing. And you could say maybe there's practice games going on between those clubs anyway, maybe on those days. But he was just giving his opinion from basically from a Dune point of view and seeing lads going off to the States and seeing lads not being motivated and you know, etc. What are your own kind of thoughts on it? Geez, there's a low to unpack in that. Um... It, one of the things to address straight away is, are you a dual club or are you uh, just a single code club? Like if you're over a team, and, and I just look at it this year, the dual players in Whitehall, and I, to add it up, had 36 matches. That's actually, it's probably even slightly more because I'm not including challenge matches. So you could probably put in three and four in there as well. So you're looking at somewhere upwards of 40 matches this year. between. Quick question, things. is that good or bad? Well, let me flesh that out yeah. a small bit. Between probably middle of February until sometime in September. So you're looking over an eight-month um, span, 40-odd games. Who on earth wants to play 40-odd games in that space of time? Is that good for motivation? Is it good for injuries? Is it actually good for even building your body up to be able to make sure that you're able to get through all those games? Chances are the vast, vast majority of players didn't play that many games. But if you know there's 40-odd games, can you keep your motivation up to the very top level? Can you listen to two managers every second uh, second week trying to pull you and drive you for this match? Now, go, now drive yourself for that match. Now the next one, the next one. Oh, by the way, don't head away for the summer. Oh, by the way, you know, mm -hmm. don't go on holidays. You know, so I think it's really, really difficult from that point of view. 
Now, if it's just a single code only, I think it's easier to balance your life and sport, um, what you're doing there, because, you know, you can kind of pick and choose, okay, we've matched this week, we don't have another match for 10 days, lads, that'd be a good time to go on holidays. Okay, boys, there's a gap between league and championship there, there's three weeks or whatever, go ahead, take your holidays, we'll do a, you know, we'll sort of do a mini pre-season, all that kind of stuff. I think it's a bit more manageable there, and you're probably playing half the amount of games. And you know yourself as a club player, during that first half of the year, it's actually, it's nice playing those games where you're just going out and hurling and it's not quite as massively serious. And then you build into a two month block where it is massively serious, yeah. give or take, you know, and just talking broadly speaking. I, I, I agree that it's not perfect, but I think it's far better than it was for the club player. And 90, what is it, 95% of players are club players? 99%. I'll go again. 99, I think, yeah. 99%. And I've, I think we need to service the 99%, and, but also at the same time, keep an eye on what's going on with the 1%. And again, what's the problem? The league, taking up half of the amount of time of the year. And league, and pre, league and pre-season, yeah. That's the issue. The championship is too short, and the league is taking up too much space. We just space out the championship a little bit more, give players breeding room in there, alternate football and hurling every second week, or have Leinster hurling and Munster football and Ulster football one week and alternate it the other way. you got to spread things out a little bit more. And I think the, the Dublin situation is extreme with that amount of games because yeah. the Football League had 16 teams in it, which is absolutely insane to expect a dual team to be able to play both codes. So they need to pare that down. I'd imagine it's not as extreme in other counties. But, you know, I think it's much better than it was. Yeah, there's just a couple of comments in there. Starting club championship in July or August when students are away, isn't working. Um, there's definitely a, a big thirst for people to go away that couldn't go away for a while. And I mm. think you go the length and breadth of the country, you'd see a hell of a lot of lads uh, and girls that are gone away during those months. Can I ask you, yeah. as, a for, as a former teacher, uh, let's say you're a secondary school teacher, what months, is it July and August you're basically off now? Secondary is June, July, and August. <laughs> they used to be, they used to be um, the metalwork teachers had it on the back of their hoodie three reasons that they wanted to be a, te- a metalwork teacher. It was like June, July, and August. <laughs> okay. So you've got that period of time off. Um, but like if you're, let's say you want to head away for a summer, traveling or working somewhere or you know, just a J1, like having a championship starting at the start of August or even late July, some players are going to say, Do you know what? I miss out on the championship. I had a load of league games there. It'll be there for me again next year. So there needs to be needs to be an eye kept on that, especially in relation to the J1s. Like the GA could take control of this and be like, look, if you're going to go away for the summer for the for the J1, that's your season done. You can't come back and play. You have to be back before, you know, whatever date if you want to feature at all for the rest of the year. Yeah, that'd be and then in the, you know, in America they might start the club championships a little bit sooner. Yeah, um, like, I don't know, championship starting in something like August or that for a teacher maybe going away for a couple of months or something is actually ideal because you're not missing that much. Whereas before, times it would have been, you could miss, they might have been spaced out a bit more, but which it could have been started in late June and you're going to miss three or four games or whatever. There's a lot of lads coming back, I would say, like Liam Rush came back in late September, mid to late sure. September. He got back for a group game and their last three knockout games do you know what I mean um, but yeah um, I, I don't know I, I definitely think um, I definitely think it's a lot better than it was way better than it was and lads the vast vast majority the 99% we talked about have fixed dates in their calendar I just think I think is that there's a different case in every every county. Like Garod Hegarty's view is different than Daryl Donovan's. Maybe it's because Garod Hegarty is going back to uh, a junior club, um, and it's maybe a little less pressurised. That's not to say it's not pressurised or anything like that in St Patrick's. I'm sure it is. Whereas Daryl Donovan's come back to a club that's trying to win a county championship. And I think like there's so many different people to ask. You need to ask. You need to talk to a dual player. You need to talk to probably a TJ Reid or a Bally Hay player that's going the whole way through, or the couple of Bally Gunner lads like Desi Hutchinson, who are basically playing hurling till August, mid-August in Waterford, going playing football, then go back playing hurling till January, then go back playing with Waterford, then go back playing with Bally Gunner hurling again straight away, then go back playing, do you know what I mean? Like That is nearly rolling over, and that requires a manager, a couple of managers to be very smart with his workload at different times. But it's funny you said there about the 40 games if you're a dual player. Like, what's your, like, at this stage of the day, like, with Burr, if I played, 
if I played eight games this year, I'd be delighted. That's a, that's a lovely number for me now because you need a week after each one. You need two weeks, like eight to 10 games, perfect. So like if lads are playing 25, 30 games in a year, like is that even sustainable long-term? Like league games, you're saying. That's, I don't think that's sustainable long-term at all. As regards, you're playing games week to week, but are you actually developing, particularly physically, I would say too? Yeah, I look, if you give it over the course of the year, eight or nine months or whatever, I'd be okay with like somewhere between 16 to 20 games at the top top of the range, really. I'd say that's about right, but then you do have a lot of challenge games going in there as well. So I suppose it depends on, you know, kind of subbing lads in and out and rotating your panel or whatever, but not every club is able to do that because it's not like Premier League where everyone has 20-odd players and, mm. you know, the best of S&C and the best of recovery and all that. But uh, people keep getting your comments in. Let us know what you think. Interesting one from Richard Murphy there saying, dual players in Wexford played about 13 or 14 weeks in a row this year. No break at all. 